Hmm. Where should I start? Let me start from trying to get an um, expression that's going to be on the way to looking like a wave equation. Right? What is the biggest difference you see between the wave equation here and the Maxwell's equations here, which is also differential equation? But there's really one way in which Maxwell's equation is nothing like the wave equation here. Yes? Yeah, order. This is second order, right? This is first order. So, so, so you know, this taken just as it is, one will not become the wave equation. So what I have to do is I have to increase the order here. So, you know, you think of some way to do it, and I'll just tell you what to do because um, I've um, reviewed the derivation um, sometime last semester. <laughs> so the way you can modify this equation so that it becomes more similar to the wave equation is, so the first two equations doesn't really do me any good. So I'm going to do something to the third and fourth equation. And so, you know, it comes down to I want to take a derivative. But, you know, what kind of derivative, right? And what I'm noticing is that I have a formula for the curl of each of these fields. So if I were to take the curl of both sides, then you know I would have to deal with the left-hand side. There's no going around that. But on the right-hand side, I would have minus. You can swap the order of derivatives, right? That's something you learn in calculus class. You can swap the order of derivatives for well-behaved functions, which is always the function we deal with in physics. Um, so you can swap the order of the time and the position derivative. So you have time derivative of curl of magnetic field. Hey, I know what curl of magnetic field is. Here it is. So I can now just plug that in. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this expression here. And um, so I take the curl. Um, right hand side. Uh, will give me something I want that I know how to deal with using this expression here. And left-hand side, I'll just need to work it out. So let me, yeah, let me write that down here. So left-hand side, I'll keep it simple for now, but, or let me write it down here. So let me keep the left-hand side simple for now. It's going to be this, curl of, curl of electric field. And we'll work out later what they should look like. That's going to be equal to the right-hand side minus the time derivative of the curl of magnetic field. And this is where I look at this and plug in this for curl of magnetic field. Pedro, do you see it? Which factor is missing here? The yeah, the negative symbol is meaningful. You can't simply get rid of it. The minus sign remains. There was nothing negative here that would have canceled that out. So I need a minus sign. So, so you don't actually get the velocity of the wave right away. Because if you are looking at this, this is a negative coefficient. And you were expecting a positive coefficient. So what you are hoping is that when you go through calculus, when you do the left-hand side, you will also get a negative sign. So those two will cancel out, and in the end, um, give you something that will resemble the wave equation. So uh, that's why you need to follow. It's not, if this was trivial, I would have just, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't bother doing it. <laughs> it does take, um, I mean, you could call it tedious, but it does take a fair amount of actual math. It's not, um, yeah, it does take a fair amount of actual math. So let's see. The right-hand side looks pretty simple. I can just uh, write it down one more step and say that this is the double time derivative because that's what it is. And I, you know, then I'm almost there. The right-hand side looks almost like what I want to see here. And all I need to make sure is that Excuse me, the left-hand side looks, ends up looking similar to that. And, you know, that's going to take work because um, the, I, I copied down curl here. Curl is, um, 
it's not a simple quantity, it's, it is a complicated quantity. So uh, let's just start writing it down and see what we get. Um, so let me do it this way. I'm going to say to start me off, curl of curl of electric field is equal to, and I'll leave the outer layer alone, and I'll do the inner layer first. And as I'm doing the inner layer, what I'm going to do is any term that I recognize from, from the get-go as zero, I'm not going to write it down. I'm, I'll just say that it's zero and then move on. So this is going to be a, um, the result of curl will be a result with the three vector components. It'll have x component um, and y component and z component. Some of them might end up being zero, but you know it can potentially have those three components. So let's look at that. Um, so these are the facts that I'll keep in mind. My E has no X, no time, no. Um, the, wait, can I say that U of X, uh, yeah, it, because, um, so for all these, I said to start out with it only because it's a plane wave, it's only going to have x dependence. Along the y or z direction, it's going to be constant. So having narrowed that first, uh, from the divergence of electric field, I could say in addition that the x component was constant. So anytime I take any kind of derivative of the x component, it's just it's gonna be zero. And um, my y component has, is only a function of x, once again, by making it a plane wave. And my z component, I chose that to be 0, to make my calculation simpler. <laughs> um, so, so this is something I'm going to keep in mind constantly, because that's going to simplify this work here. So here, I'm taking the derivative of the z component. OK, that's a 0. I said, by choice, z component is 0. And then I'm going to take the derivative of the y component, which is not 0, but with respect to z. Well, that's going to be 0, because y component only depends on x. So um, that's why I've made these uh, simplifying choices, because it'll make a potentially complicated vector quantity simpler. And you know, the, all, these are all reasonable assumptions. It's not some crazy special case that I'm bringing in. So, all right, <laughs> x component is taken care of, y component. So it's uh, x component, so that's a zero from the get-go. z component, well, that's also zero because we said that's a zero. So, all right, that's y component is zero as well. So I have z component to worry about. Once again, all this is important. We need to go through it. Um, okay, so the y component Derivative with respect to x. Now that's not going to be zero. So that I need to write down. Derivative of the y component with respect to x. All right. And then derivative of the x component, OK, that's going to be zero again. So the only surviving term is um, this term that I wrote down here that ends up as the z component of the resulting thing. So uh, let me just write it down. Well, I guess I can actually leave it here. And I'm going to take another curl, and so let's see what we get. We get another curl of this. So, um, so when I do that, I'm going to have x component plus y component plus z component. And once again, we go through this exercise carefully. Because whenever you are dealing with this uh, gradient operator, you are dealing with the things that have components, with other things that have components. That's why you have to slow down and make sure uh, you're not mixing up components of one thing with the other. So, 
So you know, when I, as I take this curl, this time you have to remember I'm taking curl of this vector. I'm not taking curl of my electric field vector. I'm taking curl of this vector. So some things to know about this vector, it has zero x and y component. It has a non-zero z component. That's actually now different. And you know, this still depends only on x. So let's look at this. Then the x component, it's taking derivative z, OK, that's not zero. But with respect to y, that's a zero. All right, <laughs> minus derivative of the y component, that's zero. So the x component, again, ends up being zero, thanks to our, uh, actually, I think x component would have been zero no matter what. Um, it's the, yeah. So the y component is the derivative of the x component, which is zero, the so zero. And then derivative minus derivative of the z component, okay, which is not zero, with respect to x, which is, again, not zero. So I actually have to write that down. So it's going to be minus the x derivative of this. So that's the minus double x derivative of the y component of electric field. So you see that we are getting what we are hoping for. We are going to end up with a minus sign. That's going to cancel this other minus sign that we be worried about. OK, let's finish this up. The z component will be. Oh, wait, wait, I did, did I finish this? Yes, I finished it. Z component will be derivative of the y component. That's a 0. Um, so 0. Uh, and then minus derivative of the x component, which is again 0. So the z component ends up as 0 as well. And um, I, I remember now, this is why I started, started making this a simplifying choice, because it made this step a lot easier. Um, before, when I didn't make this choice, I would have some terms written down here and here that I had to deal with, and I didn't want to deal with them anymore. <laughs> so, so that's the result. We do this simplifying kind of a one-dimensional plane wave situation. This um, left-hand side ends up being minus, or yeah, y hat. So it only has y component, minus double position derivative of EY. That's going to equal to the right-hand side. So right-hand side is equal to minus mu naught, epsilon naught. And then let me write out this, um, this electric field. We started out by assuming that this electric field only had Y component, right? So let me write that down. Y component, EY, uh, or I guess double time derivative of the EY. And this is one place where we see something that's reassuring. Because, um, then, and the reassuring thing is that it's the same component, Y hat and Y hat. If these had been different components, then we would be in trouble. Like if uh, this is somehow we ended up with, then we would have to say, well, the only way to satisfy that equation is to say the whole thing is zero. Because you know something that's in the y hat direction cannot equal something that's in the z hat direction. So the only way this left-hand side can equal the right-hand side if these two vectors are pointing in the same direction. And they do. They're both the same in the point in the y direction. And what you have is the wave equation in terms of the component, the y component on the left-hand side and the y component on the right-hand side. So uh, minus signs cancel as we want it. And this is the wave equation that we end up with. The one-dimensional, the plane wave wave equation that you end up with is the double position derivative of the y component of electric field is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times double time derivative of the y component. And so this is the kind of derivation that Maxwell went through. And this is when he realized that, well, or rather, this is his prediction 
of something that he would recognize as electromagnetic wave. This is a wave formed by electric field. Nothing but the electric field. It's an oscillating electric field. So what it's saying is that when I have a charge that's oscillating up and down, that uh, causes a ripple in space. And what that ripple is made up of is just the electric field. It's not a ripple of some movement of, uh, it's not a ripple of movement of some physical object. It's not a ripple of movement of air molecules. The only thing that's rippling in this ripple is the electric field. And, or, you know, if we did a similar derivation, except we did it in a magnetic field, then it would be a ripple of magnetic field. And um, I will tell you this much without going into it too much, that it's a kind of ripple that people haven't seen before. Because um, when people talk to, uh, deal, dealt with a wave, usually there was some kind of a medium. There was something physical that you could point to, water, air, some kind of string, that this is the thing that's doing shaking. But this is the first case where the only thing that you can point to and say, this is what's shaking, is the electric field. And if you think all the way back to the humble beginning of electric field as this device here, you just think that, well, electric field, that's nothing, any, that's nothing physical. It's just a mathematical device that tells you how to calculate the electric force. And what I'd tell you is that this equation is what gives physical existence to electric field. As in, with this, we can no longer say electric field is a mathematical convenience, uh, mathematical device. It's something that has to physically exist. And what I like to say is that um, anything that can kill me is not, it has to be real. It's not phantom or something that virtual. And electro electromagnetic waves can kill you. Uh, what's called a gamma ray, it's an example of ionizing radiation, is electromagnetic radiation. It can kill you. So um, it's not oscillation of some far away charge that kills you. It's the electromagnetic wave that hits you that's going to kill you unless it turns into Hulk. So, um, so this is really what, this is what gives the strongest uh, argument to the uh, claim that physicists will make, that electric field has a physical reality. So, so this is the electromagnetic wave, and I guess most of you know this final answer is, um, what is the speed of electromagnetic wave? As in, you know, this is the coefficient that we identify in the location of one over v squared. So I can solve for this one over v squared and say velocity of electromagnetic wave is equal to this thing reciprocal square rooted. So square root of one over mu naught epsilon naught. Can someone tell the class what this is expected to be? Chris? Yeah, this is supposed to be speed of light. And you know, for Maxwell, this was actually a very significant discovery because um, in Maxwell's time, speed of light was actually known. People didn't know what it was. They were actually arguing over nature of light. Is it a particle? Is it a wave? Newton was uh, the guy who had a corpuscular theory of light. He thought light was particle. And um, this was actually a debate that was going on in the early 19th century. Maxwell only came up with all this in the uh, 1860 something, 1865. So by the time Maxwell did all of this, people have been arguing over what light was. Some people are saying it was particles, some people are saying it was wave. And actually the wave theorists have been winning for a while because they were predicting all these interference effects and without understanding what kind of wave light was, they were seeing those interference effects. So people had an idea that light was some kind of wave, they didn't know what. Um, so this, uh, when Maxwell calculated this number, and you know, he knew constant epsilon naught from magnetism experiments. He knew, knew constant mu naught from, sorry, epsilon naught from electricity experiment, mu naught from the magnetism experiment. So plug in these two, apparently two disparate unrelated numbers. Then he gets a number that he recognizes as speed of light or 
approximately equal to uh, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And there's nothing else that's that fast. So when you calculate the number, he recognized that as the number that was already measured from astronomy, where people were measuring the, um, the time delay in the, the, I guess, the Galilean moons from appearing, depending on the distance between Earth and Jupiter, or Earth and Saturn, whichever it is. Um, they were noticing that those moons were um, appearing a few minutes later than they should have. And so based on that, people already calculated the speed of light. And Maxwell was finding this uh, number that he calculates from this theory matches that experimentally measured the value of light. So um, he makes that guess that uh, light is, in fact, electromagnetic wave. And um, it won't get confirmed for a while. There are um, other guys who actually did experiments to generate electromagnetic waves. And I think those might have been done after Maxwell died. Um, and to confirm that the visible light is actually electromagnetic wave would take a longer time. But this is the, this is the biggest discovery, that something as familiar as light is actually, you know, comes from this. It's, uh, um, no one would have guessed that light had a kind of electric um, nature to it before all of this math. 